durante le attività del Comitato Etico per le sperimentazioni cliniche di Bologna, dove sono la rappresentante dei pazienti, mi sono accorta che le persone con HIV sono escluse dalla maggioranza dei trial che mi passavano tra le mani e che dovevo valutare. Eh, ciò mi ha, provica- mi ha provocato un senso di grande ingiustizia e di frustrazione. La sensazione è stata come se il resto della medicina non si sia resa conto che non siamo più negli anni Ottanta e che oggi l'HIV si può controllare, che i nostri sistemi immunitari sono buoni e che l'arte è ben tollerata e con scarse interazioni farmacologiche con altri farmaci. Mi sono sentita impotente e vulnerabile in quanto paziente con HIV. Poi la condivisione con le ATG, l'approfondimento della problematica che ha dato vita alla position paper mi ha fatto sentire meno sola, meno male e ha sedato la mia rabbia. We've done some specifics in making sure that people living with HIV were involved in, in clinical trials for hepatitis C drugs, but we hadn't looked at the wider picture and it was quite obvious that people who were living longer term with HIV had comorbidities and they were going on treatment. And there was very, very little data on how effective these drugs were in people living with HIV and if there was any need for an an adjustment of dosage, etc. So it became quite obvious anyway. Then during COVID, of course, we were hearing hearing, uh, numerous complaints about people living with HIV not being included in the vaccine trials. And that was not good at all. In fact, it's not just not good, it was quite crazy because the reality is people living with HIV were always going to be the target group, the, the people most in need of, uh, of, of COVID vaccines. And it was quite clear that for the pharmaceutical companies, they'd had a tendency to try and keep their data clean. So we thought, you know, we've got to try and challenge that in some way and challenge it in a very positive way. So I think that's why we decided to come up with the position paper. And I think the position paper is very clear in what it's uh, demanding, to be perfectly honest. Namely, that you shouldn't be developing drugs for, uh, for a wider population if you don't know how to use them in that wider population. And people living with HIV are part of that wider population. We need to get real medical trials in the real population, and that's what that paper is all about. Prima di tutto dare visibilità a questo problema che è noto ma non lo si è mai affrontato adeguatamente e che se non risolviamo ora rischiamo di portarcelo dietro per sempre. Il paradosso è che ora non moriamo più per l'HIV ma per altre patologie che tra l'altro ci colpiscono di più rispetto al resto della popolazione HIV negativa. Ma i farmaci per queste patologie non sono testati su di noi. Ciò significa che quando sono commercializzati noi li utilizziamo ma in assenza di dati di efficacia e di sicurezza e questo non va, più, non va bene, non è più accettabile. Ci aspettiamo quindi che questo, che è veramente un ulteriore stigma legato all'HIV, sia rimosso. Inoltre le sperimentazioni possono dare una possibilità a chi ha fallito tutti i trattamenti standard disponibili di avere un'ulteriore chance e questo noi lo sappiamo bene. Quindi questo, questa opportunità dovrebbe essere possibile anche per chi ha l'HIV. Le aspettazioni sono che possiamo avere la tutta natura dei medical trials cambiate so che siano più riflettive delle popolazioni che vanno a usare. Now, we're not naive, we don't expect to, to have necessarily those trials with absolutely everybody in them. We know that in the United States, where there's already some mention, they talk about CD4 cutoffs, etc. But really, the expectation is that we can encourage the pharmaceutical industry and academia who are carrying out trials to ensure that they can get people living with HIV into those trials and that they can be more reflective of the population that would use them. And it's a wider thing. We will be talking to other people, to other groups of people, because it isn't just us. It may be people with, with, with other conditions, people who've just finished 
long courses of cancer who may well be neglected as well. So expectation is that the entire environment changes and that we get uh, industry to actually come up with medical trials that reflect the real world. Sicuramente cercando di costruire uno spazio comune di confronto dove discutere per esempio sulle raccomandazioni per gli studi oncologici che già la stessa FDA ha emesso nel 2020 che suggerivano di non utilizzare come criterio di esclusione la sola positività all'HIV ma di sostituirla con dei criteri di eleggibilità basati sull'assenza di AIDS. Dobbiamo capire prima di tutto perché queste raccomandazioni sono ancora largamente disattese e soprattutto estenderle a tutti i trial delle altre patologie, non solo nell'ambito oncologico. We can learn our lessons from the Sitches model with hepatitis C. And basically we got all the correct people in the room. We had pharma who were working on the medical trials. We had an EMA investigator who was in there, we had academics, we had clinicians and of course we had people living with HIV and Hepatitis C. So we had all the correct people in the room uh, with one, if you like, common aim. And there was a lot of things that we learned from that about how you can put protective bubbles around your data if you do have more at-risk groups involved. Um, so I think the how is getting everybody together. And I think it's, it's a process that needs to begin with a, one of those Sitches style meeting that we had with uh, for Hepatitis C, where we actually do make sure that we get some of the big companies, companies that we don't normally deal with, you know, that we don't want to talk to the usual suspects because they already deal with us. You wouldn't exclude someone with HIV for an HIV trial drug. So it's, it's a case that the biggest challenge I think we face is making sure that we can get all of the, the companies that we don't normally talk to in a room together so that we can say, how can we challenge this? We know why it happens. It happens because you want to get a drug to market quickly and you want to get it to the FDA or EMA quickly. Uh, how, can we, uh, how can we work with you to ensure that that no longer remains the, the sole objective and that you can actually try to get your drugs through EMA and FDA with a more, um, a more, a more holistic kind of uh, database that, that, that reflects the real world.